and uh, today is the 15th session of uh, this lecture series and today the topic is uh, application of lightweight hybrid construction for multi-story houses and apartments and we are uh, grateful uh, for professor uh, Tisan Jaisinghe for conducting this interesting lecture series and we are receiving many positive feedbacks regarding this lecture series um, thank you very much sir and uh, over to you sir Thank you, Manduka. Right, so today, uh, I good evening. Uh, I hope you all can see the white sheet. Yes, good evening. Yes, yes sir, we can see. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, lightweight. Lightweight hybrid multi story construction. So, last time I showed you that this uh, precast lab system that will allow us a thickness of 350 millimeters, uh, sorry, 90 millimeters altogether. With the screen has the potential to span anything up to six meters or more, despite its slab thickness being 90 by using 175 millimeter wide beams, where the depth has to be increased as the span increases. So that's what uh, we uh, learned last time. Then we did a rough cost estimate. And what I showed was the weight is nearly 50%. Cost is sometimes even less, less than 50%. So it could be 50% or less. Then what he said was, because we are having this system where we have we precast the beams. So we cast the beams. It can be precast or cast in situ, depending the lifting capacities available. So if you have a tower crane, you can even precast these beams. Then, because we are doing a 45 millimeter thick screen, where all these beams are propped, so we prop them. So there are props during the construction. So the deflection is zero. So once when you are removing the props, first we have to remove these. Then gradually, we have to remove these from the center outwards. We have to remove these center outwards. If we are removing the props center inwards, sorry, outer to inwards, and finally we remove the middle prop, then we are we immediately increase the span by hundred percent. So basically, we have a situation. We have many props. So when you are removing the props, it should be center outwards. But if we start removing the props this way, if we remove the props this way, it's wrong. Why? Because we are going to remove the prop in the middle at once, and that can increase the span by two times, adding a shock moment onto the system. So that is wrong. So this is the correct way of removing the props. But uh, the center prop can be removed because the uh, slab is not subjected to a heavy load. Then the other important thing is, because we are 
having this only as 45 millimeters. The other advantage is that uh, we can do it at a control phase so that we can finish it perfectly level and then we can cut it with so either the tire bed can directly come on this and another technique available is tire route we add one is to one sand as well so rather than using route directly we can use sand and route mix and uh, that will allow us to maintain a slightly thicker eye bed so that any unevenness on this surface can be taken into account by the tile bed so you don't have to you don't need a, a leveling screen because if we are careful we can do this without the leveling screen so uh, in if you look at today's context we need these because we are supposed to minimize the number of operations. Although we say labor is cheap in Sri Lanka, still, you know, we have to pay 3,500 rupees per day. We have to spend 3,500 rupees per day for a laborer and 4,500 to 5,000 rupees per day for a, a skilled <coughs> laborer. So these 3,500 for a helper, 4,500 to 5,000 rupees for a skilled laborer. So what you see is that, what you see is that, you know, Minimizing the number of operations is also an important part of this uh, cost optimization process. So today is the 15th lecture of this series. And uh, today is uh, 20th. 20th, yes, 20th March 2024 and page number one. So basically, what you see is this. Then, then we have to see what are the possibilities that are available when we try to apply this technology to uh, apartment buildings and houses. And what are the remaining parts of design that we have to do? So far, we have covered most of the concrete Des related designs like the, like the design of slab system, design of the composite system, design of individual beams. So all those have been covered in great detail. Now today I'm going to talk more about, okay, so because it's a hybrid system, we are going to have a little bit of involvement of the wall. So the concrete block wall or the cement block wall is also making a role. So we have to look at masonry design and also the column design, column design. So we'll uh, look into that aspect a little bit. So there are number two. So if I look at a typical Scenario. So let's say we have a house like this. So we have the rooms, this area, like a wet kitchen, pantry and bedroom and uh, so washroom whatever it can be anything that we like and then uh, 
we might have so i'm trying to use the same plan that i used earlier to highlight the issues and then this might be the living area and you might have the garage and entrance and bedrooms washrooms and so on so what are the issues so if you look at this type of system then how can we optimize so here is a living area so we might have large openings so we might need some columns like this and we might need some columns like this and we can have some columns like this and we might also consider having some columns at these locations i'm just marking but some of these may not be essential so if they are not essential we can drop them later so these are possibilities only and uh, these locations few columns so why we need columns like that for example we need we need large openings windows we might need large doors here and uh, we might need large windows here and we might need another large opening connecting uh, the living and garage spaces and here we might need a big window so when you consider all these possibilities what is the best way to arrange the beams and how to optimize so because we are having some columns here we can certainly run a main beam here so i'll use purple for the main beams so we can run a main beam here and we can also run a main beam in this direction area run a main beam here run a main beam here. then we have to see in which direction we run the secondary beams the beams that will support the slab panels so if you look at that aspect what you see is we can run a set of beams like this and we can run set of beams like this. and we can also run some beams like this if this area is about 2 meters you don't need you can directly support onto the beam and here also we can run a beam like that so those are the possibilities which means we are running the slabs this way we also we run the slabs this way. so if you look at the scenario here you can see these slabs will span this way so these 4 meters that is 4 meters so this half that that 2 meters so we have a b so this wall will carry a load this wall will carry a load and the load it has a width of 2.0 meters and this b will carry a load 50% of this 
will be transferred this way, 50% will go that way. But that 50% will go on to another concrete beam. And there are concrete columns to take that load. So the concern may be the load that is transferred onto the masonry wall. So we have a masonry wall. The thickness can vary between 150 to 200. Minimum is 150, and generally the maximum width of a block wall is 200. So we have an upper limit of 200. There's a load, so there's a panel supported on the wall directly. Then on that, we are going to build another wall, like that. And then we might have another slab. So if you consider, that the load from the slabs, the slab thickness is 90 millimeters. So we have 1.35 times 0.09 into 25 plus 1.04 finishers plus 1.5 times the load. Let's uh, the minimum load uh, the specified in Euro code is 1.5 for the houses anywhere in the house. But uh, we'll assume something like two just to keep a small margin. So this comes to this comes to. Point nine, sorry, point not nine into twenty five plus one three point two five into one point three five plus three. So seven point three eight. So let's say approximately equal to seven point five kilonewtons per meter square. That is the load that will be transferred. So you can see, so at each floor level, we get 15 kilonewtons per meter transferred onto the wall. So the question is how many floors we can have this 150 millimeter thick wall supporting? before it reaches its capacity. So that is a question that we have asked. That is a question that we have asked, right? For that, we are to look at masonry design. So I'm planning to cover a little bit about masonry design aspect. So we have to learn how to deal with Euro code six. Eurocode 6 covers masonry design. So we'll uh, have a look at how masonry design part of this hybrid construction can be covered. But before that, we look at how to handle the reinforced concrete design part of the, part of, uh, the frame so, or the structure. So the reinforced concrete part will be these L-shaped columns and the beams supported by the L-shaped columns. So, now when you look at the situation, page number three. So we have to see where these uh, share columns will come. So we have a wall. And we the wall goes like that. So when we have a wall like this, we can have two possibilities. 
the first possibility is okay we can have a typical 225 by 225 column so this is 150 and so we try to have this column but there are many disadvantages one is we can see it creates a corner and plastering this corner is a difficult task it takes time so it takes labor it will not take any extra material but it takes labor and people find that it is unacceptable to have columns projecting like that. So what is the other option available? Other option is have 300 this way, 300 this way, and have a thickness of 150. So it's an L-shaped column. Now let's do a comparison. So this is 225 by 225. The area is 225 by 225. Here the area is 300 by 150 plus 150 to 150. So let's do the numbers and see which one is bigger. 50,625, is that right? Other one is 300 by... Other one, other one is 67,500. Yeah, 67,500. Okay. So we have two areas. So you can see, this column is even bigger. Although it looks small, it's bigger. So if you look at the type of loads that come onto this column, right? So the loads will primarily come from this side. It goes like this until it meets another column. So these are main beam. So every two meters, it will have a beam running in the other direction. So, you can see these two meters, these two meters, so all this load from here to here will be transferred onto this beam. And in this direction, if you have four meters, say five meters, then the load on this beam will be like this. It will have the load. And uh, so let's assume that this is a large window and the similar windows are in the upper floors as well. So we can simplify the calculation. So what we get is a load of 7.5 into 2 meters into 5 divided by 2. So we get a load of 7.5 into 2 into 2.5. So we get a load of 37.5. So, and it's a continuous beam, so we can analyze it. And you can see it's not a major load. And then we have to see at which level we can have this uh, beam. Because, you know, we need to have a, if we have a window, we need to have a lintel as well. So, if you look at the level that we need this beam, you will see that we have the building, the opening. Generally, the openings are 2.4 meters tall. And 
each block has a height of 200 so the main beam can have a height of two times the block work so the beam can have a height of 400 and then at the center we are getting 37 point and then we have to decide whether we are going to have the beams in this other direction like this beam at which level so that is something that you have to work so we did 2.4 2.8 so you find that uh, the so 2.4 plus 0.4 plus if the height of the beam system is let's say another 0.4 so you'll find the floor to floor height is 3.2 meters not excessive the floor to floor height is 3.2 meters so these numbers have to be carefully worked out so you have to decide at which level this beam will be run and the ideal is we run it at the lintel level so that automatically this beam will form the lintel so you don't need a you don't have to spend money for lintel or anything the beam will the main beam will be the lintel as well so there's an advantage there as well so you can see then if you look at this scenario then here we get a load of 37.5. Half the load will go this way. Half the load will go this way. So you can see from each flow, what you are transferring onto the onto the call when you consider self weight of all these beams might be about 20 kilowatts. So you can see, we are transferring a huge load, we are transferring a small load. When the rooms are small, and uh, I'm looking at this part of the building, this part of the building. I'm looking at this part of the building, where this can be about five meters, and these are around four meters. So that part of the, and you can see, because we are transferring part of the load into this side by having slabs and also we are having windows one on top of the other, the loads on this beam will not be excessive. So this column is very lightly loaded. This column is very lightly loaded. So what I want to tell you is we have a column that is very lightly loaded, but it is having a area bigger than this column. So, which means this is good news. Why? Because we have a column supporting a main beam, but it is not excessively loaded. So, this says, okay, we can have minimum reinforcement on this column. We can have minimum reinforcement on this column. That's, that's good news because you know we want to minimize the amount of reinforcement needed in the uh, building. So what is the reason for this? The reason is part of this load is actually taken by the wall. Part of this load is taken by the wall. That is the reason. So you can see not only with the slab, even with the frame involved, we are going to get advantage where we need minimum amount of reinforcement. Where we need minimum amount of reinforcement. So if you look at this scenario, let's look at the column. So I'll show you the possibilities. So when you do the actual calculations, we can get the exact numbers. So this is 300. This is 300. This is 150. This is 150. Okay. 
So let's assume that this is axially loaded. Then, then without reinforcement, and let's assume that you know we have been smart and we have been able to get a concrete of 2530C by using some admixtures and also with proper curing. So if we get 25 megapascal concrete, what is the load carrying capacity of this section? Load carrying capacity is 0.567 FCK times area of concrete. How do you get it? Because when you test a cylinder, cylinder strength is FCK. So the axial load carrying capacity is 0.85 times FCK. And we have to divide it by the partial factor of 74 material strength 1.5. So 0.85 divided by 1.5 is 0.567. So we can substitute 25 here. And you can substitute the area 67,500 here. And we can see, and we can say 10 to the power minus 3. And you'll see that this can carry 0 0.567 into 25 into 67,500, which gives 956 kilonewton capacity. So you can see this column, although looks small, it is not small. It is bigger than a typical or the most familiar size of columns, 225 by 225 column. It's bigger and it can carry about 956 kilonewtons. And its buckling tendency is very low. Why? It's L-shaped. And each direction has a length of 300 millimeters. So the tendency for buckling is very low in this one because you know it has a 300 millimeter length in one direction. Although this part is empty, but uh, you know the buckling tendency is very low. So we can provide 0.2 percent reinforcement as. Uh, practiced in the Euro code. So 67,500 into 0 0.002 is equal to 130 millimeters. 135. But Eurocode says when you are providing reinforcement, the minimum size for minimum size for the vertical bar is 12 mm. So you need 12 millimeter bar. You need one bar. So the moment you have bars like that, we can have a link. And we can have another link this way. That also can be provided to bars. So the minimum number of bars that we need in this column is five numbers of 12 millimeter, giving 113 into 5. So something like 550 millimeter square is much more than what you what is given there. Then we can have links at 20 times diameters. 20 into 12 is 
240. So we can have leads at 225. And Eurocode recommends at the top, at the bottom, 400 millimeters. Reduce the spacing up to 0.6. So 225 minus multiplied by 0.6 gives something like uh, 150. So here we can have 150 centimeters. Bottom 400 millimeters, 150 centimeters. So you can see uh, we need some links. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have any bar size less than 8 millimeters. So this link has to be 8 millimeters. Because uh, Eurocode does not allow my steel. So it says any reinforcement should be 400 to 600 type. So it does not uh, say that, you know, it doesn't talk about the link. So link also should be the same strength. So because of that reason, the smallest size of the reinforcement available in the market is 8 millimeter. So we have to use 8 millimeter links. 8 millimeter links. But this shows the possibility. Shows the possibility that we have a column which actually goes into the wall. But then you might ask, why don't we go for 300 by 150 column? We all know this 150 is not a very safe dimension because this might have a tendency for buckling. So why we go for L shape is to prevent that tendency for buckling. So the moment you prevent the tendency for buckling, how the column fails? Column fails by crushing of concrete. The moment we prevent the tendency for buckling, the column fails by crushing of concrete. So we allow we ensure that the column fails by crushing of concrete, not by the buckling of the column. So that's why we go for this L shape. Otherwise, you can see this L shape is not a need unless for the buckling tendency of thin columns. So because the column, we deliberately make the column thin because of practical advantages. Like, uh, you know, not showing the presence of the column at the corner. We are actually going for L-shaped L -shaped column, right? Which is actually larger than a normal column. We need little extra concrete. But if you look at the system, the main advantage is we run the main piece only in one direction. We run the main beams only in one direction. Only in one direction. We run the main beams only in one direction. All the other beams are the beams of the slab system. Or else, we might have a beam, a lintel, beam at the lintel level like this. Or else, we are making use of the wall to carry the vertical loads. Or else we are making use of the wall to carry the vertical loads. So, because of all these reasons, you can see, we can get a significant cost advantage because we are using the minimum size reinforcement. And even if you go for five, six stories, Still, we can go with the minimum size of reinforcement. So that's a huge advantage. That is a huge advantage when you consider the cost of construction. And the other important aspect is, you know, these uh, columns are not obstructing the arrangement of interior because columns can be made part of the wall system. Columns can be made part of the wall system. 
Is that clear, Bandhukar? Yes, that is clear, sir. Right. So, now you can see there is no major issue with the columns. There is no major issue with the columns. And uh, the beam, main beam is also not a major issue. But uh, it's most likely that uh, because we are going to have this, uh, this main beam at the lintel level, we will have to design the main beam as a rectangular beam of 400 deep, 150 deep. So we have to design it as a 400 deep, 150 wide beam. So there is no buckling tendency of in any of these members because they are all part of the masonry and concrete system. So then you might ask, okay, so we can see the possibilities for apartments, but I would like to take one step further explaining the possibilities for apartments. So in an apartment building, we need, we can have large Pads like this, where two of them might form, or one of them might form the apartment, or two of them might form the apartment, right? Depending on the size, so this can be about seven meters, this can be about eight meters, seven into eight, maybe eight multiplied by seven, fifty six. 56, so this is this area is about 600 square millimeters. So in an apartment building, what we can do is we can go for large spans like this with the columns at the corners. So these are only possibilities. So you have to think and see how best we can optimize. So we, got, we can get the whole apartment or about 50% of the apartment onto one panel like this. Then when the, it comes to apartments, we have a major requirement. What is that requirement? We need washrooms. So we can have walls around the Mushrooms. And then you can run the panels like this. And we might need an extra column here because we are we may have to run additional beams from here because this can be about two meters. So why we prefer masonry? For a washroom is, we can, on the masonry wall, we can support the panels. On the masonry wall, we can support the panel and we can easily have a drop. Because, you know, the washrooms need a drop of two on, and we can have a drop up to 200 millimeters. Why? Because the height of the block is 200 millimeters. So, we can have the panel with a drop of 400 millimeter, 200 millimeters and fill this up. So this can be 200, 200 and our panel is also can, can give 90. So this can be 110. So we, we make up 200 millimeters. And then we can run other main beams. The advantage of this is that now if, if you are going to have any partition wall, it is not a major problem. Why? These beams, now if we if you want, we want a partition wall, what we have to do is below the partition wall have a lintel or a beam of 200 millimeter depth. 
and the particle walls can be 100 millimeter. So what happens? This this beam will transfer the weight of the weight of the partition wall onto this beam and onto this beam. And when you are designing the beam, because we have to design the beam for all these loads, then you will find beam is subjected to a UDL plus a point. So, it's a matter of designing the beam, this, this beam to carry it. So, you can see there's a huge possibility that is not available with solid slabs because solid slabs are not capable of supporting this kind of partition walls without having huge amount of extra reinforcement. Whereas, in this system, because we are having beams, we can easily support any kind of partition wall either across the beam or along the beam. So we can have a partition wall here. No problem because this beam can be designed to carry that the, carry the weight of the partition wall. So Banduga, can you see the advantage of this system for apartment yes. buildings? Right. Yes, sir. So, so you can, if, if you carefully plan the apartment building, this is a need, a lot of planning. Yes, sir. But you can certainly make sure that the system is very efficient, and uh, you don't have to go for a lot of walls at various locations. You can concentrate the columns at few far, far apart places, run the main beams, and on that run the apartment so that all the apartment doors will be transferred to the main columns that you have selected. So one question, sir. Uh, when, yeah. uh, when developing these uh, uh, floor plans, whether the architectural stage, uh, the, those things should, no, actually, be, should go parallel? Yeah. yeah, so basically you have to work with the architect and uh, make the architect understand that you know what are the positive side of what is the positive side of this system so that architect will adopt to the positive side of it right because this has a lot of positive aspects now one of the biggest problems that we have in the apartment buildings is uh, the the partitions are everywhere and uh, carrying transferring the weight of the partitions to the ground level is not an easy task, right? So, whereas in this system, what we need from the partition walls is they being lightweight. If they are lightweight partitions, we can straight away have them on the on this slab system without having a much cost penalty, right? Is that clear, Bandhuga? Yes, that's clear. So, so basically, you certainly we have to work with the architect. So basically, because architect decides. So we have to make the architect understand. Because what you have to understand, what you have to keep in mind is now, at the moment, we have a huge crisis in the construction industry. Because yes. nobody wants to invest. So if you want to bring the investment in, we have to think differently. Right? We can't think in the traditional way and make things happen. Because, you know, in the traditional way, costs are too high. We have to bring the cost down, but with the innovative thinking. So that's the way forward. So what you see is we need some kind of adjustment. And uh, so there are many opportunities available for planning uh, apartment building. So we have few undergraduates and postgraduates working on all these aspects of how to plan apartments, uh, what are the rules that the architect should be known, you know, what we have to tell the architect, okay, how to think of the structural requirements and what are the 
uh, advantages of the system and also uh, we have to think about how to make use of very lightweight materials like uh, autoclave blocks aerated autoclave blocks or lightweight partitioning materials uh, which where the cost advantage will come because uh, they are lightweight we can make a saving on the uh, reinforcement so likewise we have to think differently right but the, uh, but when i was uh, when i presented the slabs what i said was when we have two t 2h 8 bars 2h 8 bars with a uh, with uh the beam supporting it and make it continuous by having continuity reinforcement this 2h8 at 150 can give a huge capacity so sometimes you will find these uh, additional beams are not essential if you have done the construction properly even the slab system can Uh, take it because when you uh, support a wall on a panel the weight of the wall is w only 40% of w will be carried by this panel the remaining 30% and 30% will be carried by the adjacent panels so when you apply a load on a width of 300 mm the actual load will be carried by a width of 900 mm so because of that reason and also we are 90 mm spanning only 2 meters it gives a huge potential so if you have any lightweight material you will find this lightweight material can be directly supported on the slab without having any concrete elements so this opens up a new era where we have to think more and more about lightweight materials lightweight panels or lightweight blocks so that's where the future lies because when you go for large spans the system this system itself is lightweight right and the other advantage of this is this need not be 150 blocks If you are going for large apartment buildings, we can actually go for two hundred millimeter blocks, which will allow this column to be automatically bigger, like four uh, hundred by two hundred, something like that, giving even a bigger bigger possibility, provided the architects are willing to take up the challenge of have going for open architecture, where the lighting and all those requirements can be satisfied and also the washrooms can be located one on top of the other so that if you the moment you satisfy those conditions we have been looking at these possibilities what is what he thought was okay there's a there's a great possibility to plan the buildings using this system so that's what we actually found so uh, what i say is you know we like many of you thinking about these possibilities because this may be the future the reason is we can reach a cost saving of around 50% is that clear bandukar yes that's clear sir right so basically what i why i present this is we like many of you thinking positively and thinking about it the yes. the the advantages that this can uh, offer and also explaining this uh, structure systems to architects so that uh, they will also will start thinking in the same lines and they will come up with uh, feasible uh, solutions yes. that will finally give us huge cost advantages and the industry will find investing or the general public will find investing in buildings is a possibility again at the moment they consider it's not a possibility but uh, the moment uh, they find the cost are lower they will find 
investing in the uh, industry is a possibility so so what i feel is uh, this uh, lightweight hybrid multi story construction has a huge potential to revive the industry right. is that clear one yes yes sir that's correct sir yes. yeah. then we also have to think about the commercial buildings where the situation is different where we will have large buildings large spans and then so looks like that this is the last span so in this area co and uh, these areas be slabs main beams so the possibilities all this can be easily converted to these thin slabs so these are the thin slabs all the spans are large the thin slabs can easily span any any length because uh, one is they are lightweight secondly they are supported by beams so so there are two possibilities so basically you can see the applications can be there for even tall and super tall buildings irrespective of the application especially in commercial buildings there is a huge pot's possibility and what you find is this is not something new if you look at textbooks you can find things like rib slabs but what is new is now these rib slabs did not have shear reinforcement usual whereas the beam system we are designing has shear reinforcement so it has shear reinforcement so this has a huge strength because we are not relying on the strength of concrete to carry shear whereas if you look at most of these rib slab systems and so on we rely a lot on the ability of concrete to carry shear whereas in this system we are not relying on the ability of concrete to carry shear we are providing shear links so we are providing shear links in a lightweight system so that's why it can span over long spans like 6 meters 8 meters all are possibilities because 8 meter is a big span but because we have a lightweight system the slab thickness is only 90 mm and each beam supports a load of only 2 meters 2 meter wide strip you will find so all these strips are only 2 meter wide so columns carry beams carry only that load so you find the system works very well because uh, uh, it has it, it has no restriction on the spans so that's how it can become a viable solution even for tall buildings and the other advantage of tall buildings is all these can be precast sometimes these beams can be even pre stressed concrete these precast beams can be even pre stressed concrete because we really have no need for it to be reinforced concrete so these long beams can be pre stressed concrete the advantage is all the tall buildings have will have a tower crane so the moment there's a tower crane lifting the beams placing them all can be done with the tower crane so there's a huge cost saving 
because uh, lifting this is a very you know tedious affair when you try to do things manually whereas if you have a tall building most of the building can be precast elsewhere and fitted at the site with necessary continuity reinforcement to make the super tall building to be super light while having the robustness so that's the that's the future possibilities is that clear bandukar yes that is clear sir right? okay so these are all possibilities so there's a huge potential for us to do more and more studies case studies uh, practical applications but we have to be little bold and do it because otherwise it will be another good solution that was limited to research and development so we like it to be taken to a new 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 stage so so that's where so in in tall buildings you know you will not have many restrictions so, so the base it will not be carrying the in the in the job it will be concrete but this allows us to bring in pre stress concrete pt into the building in, by pre casting the beams and not only the beams even the slabs can be pre cast with pre stress concrete so all these are possibilities and especially in large buildings there's a possibility to pre cast the whole building most of the building except the main columns and beams elsewhere and fitted at the site because you all know concrete slab is a major task in even in commercial buildings because it needs lot of attention lot of work at the site and that all can be reduced if we develop these systems more because this has the huge potential especially because of this here look because most of the uh, restriction on the other systems had been that you know they tr have tried their best not to have shear leaks because they are cumbersome but in this particular system because we are going for copy cast steps of 2 meter you know we are only few beams and those can be cast pre cast or in situ cast depending on the requirement and the main aim is minimize reinforcement and the other aim is remove any concrete that is not doing anything useful remove as much concrete as possible if it is not doing anything useful so that's where the pt also comes in because in a pt section the whole section is effective so pt also has pre stress concrete also has a huge potential in this system where the pt beams have to be cast with links that is not a major problem you can do uh, the pre casting operation with uh, shear links that's not a major hurdle. so that can be done okay vandup Okay, sir. Right. Now let's look at masonry design. So uh, I will uh, use a knot. I'll share the screen now. Okay, sir. Right. I'll share the screen. So I'm sharing okay. the our undergraduate knot. Okay, we can where see. Where we teach uh, masonry walls, right? So. you are all familiar with masonry so i don't have to explain a lot about masonry but i am going to talk about the strength of masonry because once we, the first thing is to know what is the strength of mason so there are so many different types of masonry available like this you can do mason with insulation all kinds of possibilities are there and then the so you can see formation they also we use the same 
partial factors of safety 1.35 dk plus 1.5 kk and uh, then in euro code we all know there are phi node phi 1 and phi 2 factors and for win nodes phi naught is 0.5 and for live loads, live loads, phi naught is 0.7. And that is the exact values that we use in reinforced concrete design. So when you have uh, dead load, live load, and wind load, we have a load case 1.35 dk plus 1.5 qk plus. 0.5 times, here you get 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 1.5 WK. So it gives 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK plus 0.75 WK. Then where dead load, imposed load is governing, dominating. Then we can have the wind load dominating. Then in that case, 1.35 GK plus 0.7 times 1.5 times dk plus 1.5 times wk. So then in that case we get 1.35 times dk plus 1.05 times qk plus 1.5 times wk. So that's the same thing that we do in masonry and uh, concrete. No difference at all. Same thing. And uh, then when you look at pattern loading the same pattern loading. Pattern loading is the same way as in concrete. And then when you are looking at the different combinations of lateral loading, you can see 1 1.35, 1.5, 1 0 0.75, 1 1.35, 1 1.05, 1 1.5. Likewise, the same scenario as in concrete. And uh, and then uh, we'll skip that because that is not relevant to us now. Right. Then we can have mason units. And there are so many different types of mason units. And uh, so there are hollow units. So here we are promoting Hollow units made out of concrete aggregate units having the opening area between 25 to 50 percent. So that's the type of uh, blocks that we manufacture in Sri Lanka because we are hollow blocks, but they have a certain wall thickness. So if I, if I, when you look at the total uh, gross area of the volume you will find it's between 25 to 50 percent. But you can actually measure it and see which category it is, but uh, generally it is in this category. Right. So what you have to keep in mind is we are looking at a group of masonries which is 2A. Right. Then it says, okay, we have to use certain mortar. And generally we use M2 mortar or M4 mortar or M6 mortar or M12 mortar. But in Sri Lanka, generally we use M4 mortar, which is 1 is to 5 or 1 is to 6 cement sand mortar without air entrainment. So when you use 1 is to 5 mortar, generally we can get a strength of 4 megapascals. So that's why we call it M4 mortar. The expected strength is 4 megapascal. 4 megapascal. Right? So, so basically, M4 means the number following the M is the compressive strength for the class at 28 days in newtons per meter square. So when you say M4 mortar, we are looking at a mortar which gives a strength of 4 newtons per millimeter square or 4 megapascal. And, and to get that, we have to use 1 is to 5 cement sand mix. But the important thing is uh, the cement sand mix 
should not be mixed in the morning and used in the afternoon so generally within 2 hours of mixing the 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 mortar should be used so we should not mix too much mortar we should mix the mortar in small quantities sufficient so that we can use the mortar once mixed we should not keep the mortar without being used too long so otherwise what we do is they keep it long and it sets then they break it again and uh, then uh, mix with water and use it so it's not a good practice so we should make sure that the mortar mix is mixed in small quantities and used rather than mixing a huge amount of mortar and using over the day and then now the most important thing is not the compressive strength of uh, uh, masonry unit but the compressive strength of the wall so if you look at the compressive strength of the wall the characteristic strength fk is given by k times fb to the alpha fm to the beta so fb means the compressive strength of the block fm means the compressive strength of the mortar so you can see this euro code is has been very good because when we test the individual block when we test when we know the type of mortar that we are using straight away we can find the characteristic strength of mason characteristic strength of mason right so otherwise you know even in the british code earlier we did not have that kind of data that kind of tables but in the euro code it's very good so straight away we know okay we know the type of block we know the type of mortar and there's a k factor so it's a matter of finding the k factor is that clear manduka yes that's clear sir yeah that's a huge advantage because you know masonry code is not looked by many but this is a is a very good code because it help us to do the masonry design uh, with a limited amount of testing on the type of unit that we are using then the most important parameter is k so if you look at the k parameter so aggregate concrete can you remember i said it's group 2 even group 1 all these are around 0.5 value and general purpose mortar so we have a situation where fk is fk is k times f b to the power alpha and fm to the power beta then you will find when you use general purpose mortar of 10 mm 10 to 12 mm for general purpose mortar alpha is 0.7 beta is 0.3 alpha is 0.7 beta is 0.3 this is a is a very useful value right so if i look at an example alpha is 0.7 beta is 0.3 right so that's what you get and k is 0.52 and fm is because we use m4 mortar for newtons per centimeter square very easy right and So what happens? F K is point five two, and let's say we are using uh, five megapascal units to the power point seven multiplied by four to the power point three. So what is the strength? So this strength of masonry. Characteristic strength of mason is zero 
point pi two multiplied by pi to the power point seven, which is three point not eight. Four to the power point three. One point five one into pi pi two. So this comes to point pi two multiplied by three pi not eight multiplied by one pi five one two pi four two. Let us put. So if you buy good high quality cheap concrete based. Blocks, hollow blocks of five megapascal strength. At whatever age you are using it, then the characteristic strength, strength is two point four. But masonry. When you try to use it as a material, we have to look at it in this context, and that is, it can buckle, right? Because it's a it's a slender wall, hundred fifty or two hundred. Not a thick wall; it's a slender wall. So it has a tendency for buckling. So we have to allow for that. Then we might not load it axial. We might have an eccentricity when we apply the loads. So we have to take that into account. So we will have a capacity reduction factor. We'll have a capacity reduction factor. We have to look at the capacity reduction, and when you are using characteristic strength, we have to have a factor of safety. The mine, we have to have a factor of safety on the material strength. Right. So. I'll share the screen. So, what are the material strengths? When the state of di indirect or flexural compression, unfazed masonry may be units of category one or category two. The factor of safety can be two point six or three. And let's see what is A and B. A means a special control. So under A, we are talking about special quality control, and B means the normal quality control. So it's better to go with B. So you will get a gamma m of three, gamma m of three, gamma m of three. So, and then let's assume that the capacity reduction factor phi is point seven. Then what is the final stress we can have? The final stress is characteristic strength divided by gamma m three multiplied by the capacity reduction factor by itself. So you will find the stress that we can have on masonry is now limited to. Two point four two multiplied by 
0.7 divided by 3 and it's limited to 0.564 newtons per millimeter squared. So you can see, so we have a strength of 2.42 as a characteristic strength, strength which has to be, it has to be divided by the gamma m value. Even in concrete, we divide the strength by 1.5 factor of safety, gamma m. And because there's a capacity reduction factor, we have to multiply it by seven. Now you find the maximum stress we can have is 0.564. And let's see what happens. Now, can you remember earlier I said at each floor level we get 15 kilonewtons per meter because it supports a panel. And the remaining part of the basin is self weight. And if you consider a height of three meters, and a width of 150 millimeters, a density of 12 kilonewtons per meter cubed, because it's a hollow material. As you can see why I prefer hollow materials because it has a lower density. So each wall will give a load of 0.15 into 3 into 12. So it gives 0.15 into 3 into 12. So it gives 5.4 yes. kilonewtons per meter. Is that right, Bandhuga? Yes, sir. 5.4. Right. So you can see, so each flow, we can say 15 plus 5.4. Let's say approximately equal 21 kilonewtons per meter. So if you convert it, you divide it by divided by uh, the width, 21 divided by 0.15 kilonewtons per meter square. The value is 21 divided by 0 0.15 140 kilonewtons per meter square or 0 0.14 newtons per millimeter square. So 0.15 0 0.56 divided by 0 0.14. What is the answer? So that means we can have four flows where masonry supports part of the slab load. So we have the ground floor, we have a slab, we have another floor, we have a slab, we have another floor, we have a slab, we have another floor, we will have a slab. That's possible. So you can see. Even with 150 blocks of 5 neutrons per meter squared strength, possible to go up to 4 floors. And if you have a reputed manufacturer, what they say is you specify the strength we supply. Why? Because what they have to do is, because this is concrete based material. You ask for five, they make sure they cure it, keep it moist, and they cover it with polythene, and then, then the curing will continue. What they have to 
increases the sever content. Sand aggregate, everything will remain the same. So the cost of the block will rise slightly, but you can increase from 5 to 7 or 5 to 8. So which shows the huge potential in this system where you can have either 150 millimeter blocks or even 200 millimeter thick blocks. And you can see when you combine the lightweight slab system, when you combine the lightweight slab system with the lightweight blocks, the opportunities are huge. The opportunities are huge. Is that clear, Bandukar? Yes, sir. That is clear. So next day we can discuss more about masonry design, how to take think about the openings, the stress concentrations, and also how to calculate the capacity reduction factor accurately. So all those things we'll have a look so that okay, uh, you can handle this uh, combined design. It's not only RC design. This is RC design, this is masonry design. So it's a combined effort that we need. Yes, sir. Right? So with that, okay. uh, we can uh, conclude today's lecture. If there yes, are sir. questions. Yeah, there are the chat. three questions. Uh, yeah. What are the questions? Uh, sir, uh, uh, is it possible to use L shape for the column 14? L shape for the column T. Ah, column footing also to be L shaped. Uh, that is not a major problem, major challenge. But uh, oh, we are we don't have a specific reason for, to do that because why we use L shape is we want to uh, embed the column into the wall. But in that the foundation level we don't have any restriction as such. So. So uh, you can you would be better off using a, a rectangular footing, right? Okay. Right. And the other question is, uh, in solid slab, similar shall we consider as strip slab and design additional rebars for this partition wall loading? Yeah, you can do that because if you look at Hillsborough strip method. That covers that aspect, but that is not the exact problem. Problem is, you need a lot of reinforcement. Whereas in this case, we increase the reinforcement in the beam, which is a much better element structurally than a slab to carry heavy loads. Now, slab is actually an ideal element to carry light beam. Beam is an ideal element to carry heavy loads. So in the normal solid slab system, when we try to carry concentrated loads, we are using a slab which is not meant for heavy loads to carry heavy loads. To, to allow for that, you can use Hillsborough heat strip method and design the reinforcement. There is no question. But you will end up with a huge amount of reinforcement. Like you need a 12 millimeter bars at uh, 100, 100 spacing over a width of 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.8 meters. Huge number of bars. Whereas in this one, you might increase uh, a 12 millimeter bar. The whole increase may be 112 millimeter bar in the beam. So that's the difference. So that's why I said this system is more efficient because uh, we are using beams with shearlings. We can make it very robust, whereas that opportunity is not available with solid slabs because the moment we try to carry heavy loads on solid slabs, the solid slab thickness has to be increased. The moment we increase the solid slab thickness, only at one location we have to carry the heavy load, but we are increasing the thick slab thickness everywhere. Is that clear, Vandukur? Yes, sir. That is clear. Sir. Because, you know, we are, we are increasing. Everywhere we are increasing. Why? Because we have to carry heavy loads. Whereas in this one, it's a concentrate. I mean, we are, we, are, we are just adjusting something in the beam. Or sometimes we can specifically carve the slab with three numbers of 8 millimeter bars instead of two numbers of 8 millimeter 
So something what we do is very local. So that's the advantage of this. I hope I have. Yes, sir, that is clear. The, yeah, question. Yes, yeah. And the last question is the uh, how uh, how about the T sections columns in the middle columns in the building and how can we collaborate the L sections and T sections of columns uh, in uh, flat slabs? Yeah, so basically L shape, column footing, uh, column, yeah, so are possible to use L shape for column, that is not the question. No, no, sir, the discussion, question? discussion is at the top. Uh, how how about our team section columns in the middle columns in the building and how to follow the red okay that's not uh, in the in the case of flat slabs okay now if you are going for flat slabs uh, you know uh, it's a, it's a matter of shear so basically uh, in the flat slabs the most critical aspect is the shear not the flexion so how are you going to carry it take account of shear, the punchy shear around the column. So if you are going to make the column size bigger, then you have a particular advantage. And if you look at the handbooks, there are methods of how to handle the punchy shear around uh, columns of odd shape, not the rectangular shape. So those uh, guidelines are given in the handbooks. So so you can handle it, but you know, now why flat slabs are discouraged in Sri Lanka is the whole concept behind flat slab is you save the labor, not the material. Flat slabs are thick. They need a lot of concrete and steel because they are inefficient in transferring the loads onto the columns. But they are very efficient when it comes to construction so so that is the philosophy that we have to do away in sri lanka because in sri lanka materials are very expensive labor is cheaper so there's no point in trying to go for high material low labor type of construction we have always go for low material though the labor can be slightly higher not excessive but slightly higher so that's the that's the philosophy we have to follow. Okay, Bandhuga. Okay, okay. Yeah, so there's one last question, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, when we provide main beam in one direction, what about the sway in other direction for more stories? Oh uh, no, actually that is something that you have to handle by, uh, for example, if it is a house, there's no problem because you have because you know in there will be play, partition walls in the building. In a in an apartment building, but in a case of commercial building, you know the the core is there to handle that part of the problem, the sway part. We can handle it with the core of the building, right? So these are the places, you know, slabs that we have uh, we use for uh, to occupy or rent. So those areas can be as light as possible, whereas to to resist the lateral loads. In commercial buildings, we can go for the core. We can rely on the core to handle it because we can have concrete walls there. Whereas in apartment buildings, you know, we can do the planning in such a way that, you know, in both directions, we have uh, solid walls so that the sway of the building can be taken by the mason. So that's the way we have to look at it. Is that right? Yes. Now, even yes, if you look at, even if you look at this plan, now here you can see there are masonry walls here. So, so there is no way that you can say, but here also you might have some masonry walls in fields. Because okay. uh, that is that is a space that we separate. Though we run the main beam in that direction, we can have masonry walls, right? So okay. these, uh, you know, generally uh, the, the separation. So. So you have to actually carefully plan it so that, uh, you know, there will be some masonry walls in both directions. And masonry walls, uh, the advantage of here is the masonry walls are loaded. The loaded masonry walls are extremely good in carrying lateral loads. 
if you have a masonry wall which is not loaded then it can you know slip and fail whereas when the masonry is loaded vertically they are extremely good in carrying lateral loads so so we have a particular advantage in this system because we are loading the masonry wall so so the structure becomes super robust very robust is that clear yes. one yes that's very clear sir and um, i think that's all sir questions um, okay thank you okay. thank you sir and yeah, you. as i mentioned uh, we are having a downfall in the construction industry so i think uh, this lecture series has i open up for those who are interested in cost effective approaches and uh, who are and i think uh, most of the participants will bring this message uh, to the construction industry as well and thank you very much sir uh, providing your uh, expertise and knowledge on this and also yeah. uh, i would like to thank uh, the chairman civil engineer section of the committee engineer mangala silva for continuing this lecture series for this year thank you very much and also i would like to thank uh, the iss secretariat publicity department and it division for their hosting arrangements and also i would like to thank all the participants and for their questions and for continuously participating in this lecture series uh, that is also very important for the success of this lecture series thank you very much and uh, good night to everyone thank you sir thank you very much okay thank you very much thank you thank you